Every day, you and I get bombarded with negative news. And just like our bodies becomes what we eat, our minds become the information that we consume. If you want to stay positive, it's so important that you also listen to stories that inspires you and uplifts you. In this podcast, we interview world-leading experts dedicated to solving the world's most pressing problems. And if you stick around, I promise you will not only be as informed as if you watch the news, you will feel uplifted, inspired, and have more positive energy in your life. Welcome to Great.com Talks with... Hi and welcome. Today, Great.com talks with Barry Kirchner, who is the executive director of the ValerieFound.org, who are New Jersey's leading kid cancer charity. And if you haven't done so already, you definitely want to press subscribe because today we're talking about what can be done to help children who are struggling with cancer and blood disorders. Barry, welcome to our podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having us at the Valerie Fund. Thank you. So for someone that might not be so familiar with the challenges, both of uh, kid cancer and also the challenges you are going through as an organization. Uh, how would you describe what you do and the challenges that you're facing? Starting with describing what we do, uh, I'll go back a little bit in a very brief history of the Valerie Fund. It was started in 1976 when Ed and Sue Goldstein lost their daughter Valerie uh, to, to her cancer after her battle. And they spent many years taking her from their home in in northern New Jersey into New York City to get the treatment that she needed. From that, they realized that there was a lack of available treatment uh, for children and families in this area. So they started this concept in memory of their daughter, Valerie, so that no one should have to travel very far for the highest quality of care. They opened the first, they, they raised money and they opened the first Valerie Fund Center in 1978. And from their desire to make a difference, there are now seven Valerie Fund Centers throughout the New York City area, New Jersey, and the Philadelphia metropolitan region, whereby any child fighting cancer or a blood disorder can get the highest quality of care close to home at any of these seven Valerie Fund treatment centers. In addition, they saw a a way to help children in the summer uh, be with others that are fighting cancer. And they started a camp called Camp Happy Times almost 40 years ago now, so that every summer the Valerie Fund also supports close to 200 children fighting cancer who have, as we say, who have or have had cancer uh, can come for free to Camp Happy Times during the summer And uh, our third major program is a scholarship program where this year we awarded 93 college and vocational school scholarships to 93 different children from our seven centers and at camp uh, that want to continue their education. So we're here to support the kids. We're here to support the families. We're here to make a difference for children fighting cancer and blood disorders. As you could imagine with the pandemic, as the virus Uh, started to rage here in the States in the spring, uh, the realization that cancer doesn't take a break during a pandemic uh, was very clear uh, to everyone in all of the Valerie Fund Centers and the need to support these children and these families, you know, remains as we all fight this horrible pandemic. What the pandemic has also done currently though, Emil, is uh, it has brought forward the need that some of these children and their families have uh, as people lose their jobs, uh, as they go, as we all fight this this pandemic. Uh, So we've had to reach out and provide much more emergency funding to the children, to the families. There will be approximately uh, 5,000 children that will come through these seven Valerie Fund Centers every year. And uh, for many of them, it's been a struggle to provide the proper nutrition uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and to pay bills for family members, uh, especially inner city families uh, that don't have the resources that you know, some other families will have 
Uh, so we have taken it upon ourselves during uh, you know, this pandemic to provide direct emergency support to these families and these children beyond the millions of dollars of funding to make sure that these centers can operate with social workers, child life specialists, educational liaisons, psychologists, and integrative medicine that would not exist in the hospitals without our philanthropy. So uh, it's been a stretch, it's been a struggle uh, to support the families directly in addition to supporting these programs and services that we've traditionally supported. But uh, we're here for the kids, that, that's not gonna change. The fundraising is changing, uh, and it's it's become uh, it's become more difficult, uh, you know, uh, as we fight through the pandemic. Mm. The story of the Valerie Fund really shows the impact two people driven by passion can have, and start to create this kind of movement. And I also understand how deeply challenging it must be, like in good times as well. But it's but in this kind of pandemic situation, how hard it, extra hard it must be to raise fund and do the work that you know is so important. I'm really curious to speak with you actually, because I suspect a lot of our listeners and I'm included, don't really understand how, how severe is the problem of children cancer? Like how many people are affected? Uh, what are the consequences? So I would be really curious to hear a little bit more background on the problem. I would, thank you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to, to share these thoughts. Uh, as, a, as a first statistic, as a first realization, since the pandemic uh, came to a crisis, you know, here in the States in mid-March, 69 Valerie Fund, new Valerie Fund patients were diagnosed with cancer just in the last eight months. And that's beyond the hundreds that were currently, uh, you know, going through their treatments, uh, as well as the hundreds, if not thousands of children really that are coming through with other hematological diseases. So, when a child comes into a Valerie Fund Center to get their medical treatment, uh, the Valerie Fund realized, Ed and Sue recognized decades ago, that it's more than the medicine that really treats the child. Uh, there's uh, a whole team of psychosocial clinicians, practitioners that need to be there. Uh, there's a social work team, there are child life specialists, there are psychologists, that need to be there to handle the psychological crises, to help the families get through uh, the financial pressures or just to understand uh, the uh, treatment protocols and the journey that their child is going to undergo over the next two to two and a half years in some cases with uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia or, or, or acute, uh, you know, other acute forms of childhood cancer, uh, the treatments are often not just a month or two or three. They go on for a year or two or three, and then there are follow-up treatments. So beyond the, the amazing medicine that's being administered by the doctors and nurses, that's where the Valerie Fund has come in and supported the family and the children with this whole team and network of, uh, you know, as I say, social work, child life, educational support so that the, the, the schools are aware of how much time the child will be out of school and how, uh, how to relate it to the, the child's friends at school so they don't look at, uh, you know, at this child with cancer or sickle cell disease or hemophilia as something that they could catch. Uh, there, there's a whole line of of educating and explaining that needs to be done with the schools and with the, uh, you know, the children's network. Uh, there's integrative medicine to deal with pain management and, and acupuncture and things of that nature to relieve the stresses and anxiety. Aromatherapy is often given. These are all ways that the Valerie Fund has, uh, has 
come into the lives of the children and their families to make this whole process much more manageable, to bring down the anxiety level, to have neuropsychologists and psychologists there. Many of these positions we know here would not exist without the funding uh, that we provide to these seven hospital centers uh, because it's so much of the non-medical service is supported by philanthropy. Uh, and that's what Ed and Sue wanted to create many, many years ago. And that's what we're most proud of. And that's, that's what the children are fighting. And then, you know, think, think of what happens if you have a child that unfortunately is diagnosed with leukemia in May or June of July of this year. You know, you're fighting all the stresses of the pandemic, trying to keep your family safe, making sure no one catches coronavirus. Uh, perhaps, uh, you know, the mother or father uh, one of the, you know, the heads of the family has been furloughed from their job because the economy is, uh, you know, is, uh, has been impacted, uh, you know, during, during the pandemic. And then you've got to deal with a child that was recently diagnosed with leukemia. The stresses on the family are incredible. Mm. We want to support all that. And that's why we're here. And that's why we love, we love telling this story because we need to raise four and a half to $5 million a year to fund all of these essential programs that are needed for psychosocial support for these kids and these families. And we're, we're proud to do it. And we love telling these stories. Uh, you really paint a picture that to me was important to understand about what kind of experience it must be to be the parent of a child that is going through this disease with all the things that needs to be learned and how to deal with school and all of it, it must be so overwhelming. So I'm really grateful there is an organization like the Valerie Found that is there that is already has the knowledge of what is needed to create a holistic solution to, um, to this disease. And I assume then that uh, the founders, Sue and... Sue and Ed Goldstein. Sue and Ed, I, I assume then that they saw that this holistic picture was missing back in 1976 when the found when they founded the the fund. So, from your point of view, then has has life changed a lot since then? What would be the difference having this disease now and uh, 40 years ago? The the main difference now is that families don't have to travel. Ed and Sue had to travel with Valerie. Uh, from outside New York City, through traffic, over bridges, into New York City, sometimes an hour to an hour and a half, if not longer with traffic, to get her into the hospital, to get her the treatment she needed. And then maybe many, you know, they would spend many hours in the hospital. And three or four hours later, after her chemotherapy, they would have to drive home with her in the car when she was having reactions and, you know, when she was sick. Uh, you know, from the after effects of the chemotherapy, that no, and that was their that was their initial focus, that we can't make it so that families have to go through this this travail to get the treatment they need. We need to bring these outpatient treatment centers closer to home, so that it's not disruptive to the family, it's not disruptive to the to the sick child's uh, siblings. Uh, so there's less stay in hospitals. And over the last 40 years, through advances in medicine, where many of these treatments can be given on an outpatient basis, but also very much due to the, the, uh, 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 the foresight uh, of, uh, of Ed and Sue, they were, we, this funding allows these Valerie Fund Centers to be geographically located uh, in, in, in major uh, suburban areas so that families don't have to drive into New York City or don't have to drive into Philadelphia uh, and they can get the treatment they need close to home. So it, it keeps the family intact and it eases the stress. Uh, there's been many, many advances uh, medically uh, that probably would get to the children and get to the families anyway, but now they get these new protocols and these new medicines with much more ease and much more efficiency. Uh, the children being treated in the Valerie Fund Centers who used to have to get shots and, and 
long involved treatments uh, for their sickle cell disease uh, now find uh, counteracting medicines and remedies uh, you know, with just a pill or to be on a daily regimen at home of things to treat sickle cell disease uh, that they could get in their Valerie Fund centers. So it's, it's a whole, it's a rec it was a recognition by Ed and Sue <clears throat> that it's not just the child that gets sick that needs treatment when a child is diagnosed with cancer. It's the whole family that's impacted. And that's what this network of psychosocial team members uh, is there for at the Valerie Fund centers. And that's what we are proud to, uh, to make sure is there. And we're also very responsive to the medical directors and the doctors and the nurses in the centers when they say, uh, you know, Barry, you know everyone at the Valerie Fund, this is great, uh, but we need, we need to provide more acupuncture and acupressure and other forms of integrated medicine because we find it really relaxes the children and it relaxes the parents just to come in and get something simple like a foot massage or a, a back rub or uh, to have an integrative medicine specialist that knows pressure points in the body, as, as you said before, the, the holistic healing, so that it takes all of the stress out of a very wound up and anxious family member, uh, and everyone leaves in, in, in a much better physical and mental state of mind. And we're proud to make that happen. And we, we recognize when the doctors reach out and say, uh, can the Valerie Fund help us provide this or can the Valerie Fund fund this program or can we get these these educational books to teach uh, young children how to deal with their sickle cell disease or to deal with their hemophilia we can provide the funding for that whereas the hospitals are so cash strapped providing the medical care they can't do it that's where we come in and that's what we're most proud of I can imagine how important that support must feel like to the whole family. Like you said, it's not just one child that is getting sick. It's the whole, the, the, that tragedy is affecting the, the whole family. Now, we're coming up towards the end of this interview. And I can imagine that someone listening to this feels like, yes, the support you give is necessary. I want to either uh, help out somehow or I want to stay updated uh, on the work that you guys are doing. Uh, how can someone, uh, yeah, how can someone stay up to date and what can someone do to help? The best thing, the be great question. And the best thing anyone can do is find us on our website. Uh, you know, we've spent a lot of time and a lot of resources uh, to be there so people can see how they could help. Uh, and I would suggest anyone who wants to help children at all, uh, and especially wants to help children uh, that, are, that are being treated at a pediatric hematology oncology center, should reach out to us uh, very simply at thevaleriefund.org, T-H-E-V-A-L-E-R-I-E-F-U-N-D.org. You could sign up to get our newsletters, you could sign up to be on our, our email list. Uh, we're sending out you know, regular blasts, of course, to tell people how they could help. We have fundraising events all year. Uh, they've been impacted by the pandemic, of course, and it's made it harder to, to generate the funds that we need to support the children and the families and the hospital centers. But it's all there at thevaleriefund.org. Uh, you can be part of our walks and our runs and our, our golf fundraising events here. Uh, we have a, a very large, uh, you know, dinner gala that this year, of course, has to go virtual uh, on November the 20th. Uh, that is a, is a large fundraiser, and we have stories of the kids. Uh, also on the website, I would encourage anyone to, to go to our video link and see the videos and the stories and hear from the children and hear from the families that speak about going to the Valerie Fund Centers and they, they speak about the care that they get and feeling like they are part of a Valerie Fund family. Uh, 
to see the impact that we could all have. But it all it all starts and stops on the website. Of course, you can make a donation through the website. Uh, we need to have support to send uh, children to our camp happy times and almost $2,000 it costs us, uh, you know, per camper. Uh, we have scholarship programs that can be funded. Uh, we have days of care that can be funded. But uh, the short answer is the Valerie Fund dot org and you'll you'll hear it all there uh, a lot more succinctly than you're hearing it here beautiful barry thank you so much for speaking with great.com today it's our pleasure and, and we can't thank great.com enough for giving us this exposure thank you so much you're welcome and for you listening if you enjoy this dialogue and you, you would like to that more people heard this kind of message please go into your podcast app or to youtube and press subscribe that will really help our um, our chances of getting into different top lists and be seen so more people can get inspired and want to make positive change thank you so much for listening and we see you in the next episode <laughs>